In this video, I'll be introducing some topological properties of manifolds. So the first property I'm going to introduce is that it has a basis of pre-compact open sets. What does that mean? Well, definition of pre-compact. We say U, a subset of X, is pre-compact if U bar is compact if the closure of u is compact okay it's not that hard to check that with um coordinate balls coordinate balls in r2 or rn that their closure is in fact compact so that coordinate balls are pre-compact the theorem the theorem is that every manifold m has a basis of pre-compact um, open sets. So what you'd be looking at is that we have this manifold, say something like this, and it I can just cover this with a bunch of balls like this, and each and every one of these is has a closure. So if you give it its boundary. So right now they're open, but if you give, give them their boundaries back, then they're going to be compact. This will actually create a basis of M. So all open sets of M can be expressed as some union of these open sets, which happen to be pre-compact. Okay, so how we do this is we look at, of course, the chart maps, right? So around each X, there is a an open U and map and homeomorphism uh, phi, right? That brings you from U down to U hat. But I'm not going to worry about that because U, the set of all those U's for each of those X's, create an open cover of M. But what you have to remember is that M is second countable. It has a countable basis. And so using properties of that, that implies that there exists a countable amount of these charts. So ui phi i from i equals 1 to infinity, that covers m by the third condition that it is, uh, has a countable basis, that you can prove that yourself. Now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll look at phi i now. Phi i, a map from u into ui into ui hat, take bi is going to be the set of balls, of open balls, br around x for x in ui hat with rational coordinates. So both of the, all of the coordinates of x are rational and are rational. And there's one more special property that I have to have on these open balls. With there being an r prime bigger than r, such that b r prime of x is still a subset of u hat i. Basically what this is, is it's saying that I have my open set in my manifold. I map that down straight down to here. And then in here, what I do is I look at all of the points with the rational co coordinates. So say that's one half, one half, that's a third, one half, that's so on and so forth. They have to be rational coordinates. And around each of these, I just look at all of the rational balls, all of the balls with rational radius, such that I can still expand it a tiny bit more and have it still be in it. So I cannot have, say, that, that one right there, because that's right along the edge, okay? Can't have one right along the edge. And the reason for this is so that the closure so that the closure of these is the same in the entire space, R2, as it is in the open set. Because if I had it right on the edge right there, 
then its closure inside this open set would be that, and we'd still have this open part right here, and it would no longer be closed in R2. So we get rid of that possibility. Note, these are pre-compact by what I said before, right? Their closures are compact in both the open set and in the entire real numbers. BI here is countable because everything is rational. Products of countable spaces is countable. So now that we have all these, what we look at is look at VI inverse of those balls of BR of X. Okay, so now if we look at phi inverse i of br of x, we're going to say because phi i is a homeomorphism, which it is also pre-compact, and because it's a homeomorphism, the set of phi i inverse of br of x for these br of x, an element of that B we discussed before, B I. This right here covers U I. And it's covering them, it's covering U I with pre compact balls, okay? So in my manifold, right, I have my open set right here. And so I map it down into R2. This is its image right here. I look at all of these rational balls, okay? And then I bring them back into here. They maintain all of their properties because phi is a homeomorphism. They keep all their properties, that all the good properties they had here, move them back over here. Okay, it still covers it. They're still pre-compact, they're still open, and so, and it's still countable. Okay, but now, how do I know that this extends? Well, because I have these, this covering with UIs, and I know that these cover UI, and I also know that they don't take up the boundary, I know that these are still pre-compact in M, and still countable, and cover it, it still covers it. It covers it and it's countable. But there's still one more thing that I have to check. It's a basis. How do I know it's a basis? Well, guess what? BI was a basis of UI hat. And so it's a homeomorphism. It's not hard to check that that would then translate to being basis of UI so that this wouldn't be hard to translate to being a basis of M. And so not only is it countable, cover it with pre-compact, but it's also a basis. Whew. Now what can we do with this fact? Well, there's a couple things that follow directly from this. So here is a proposition. Okay, so the first part of this proposition is that M is locally path connected. Basically meaning is that for any point, I can find an open interval around it such that any other point in it I can just connect with the continuous path. So around any point you can find a path connected open into uh, open neighborhood around it. And how do I know this? Well specifically by the thing we just did, right? It's a bunch, it's an open cover of pre-compact walls, pre-compact walls are path connected, so those are the specific open sets. Okay, two is that M is connected if and only if it's path connected. Okay, why is this? Well, if it were path connected, right, imagine it were path connected. Any two points, I can find a line between them. Well, that basically means is that that open set that's path connected is the entire M and by uh, simple manipulation, you can prove that that would imply that it's connected. Okay, number three is that the connected components equal the path connected components. So that's precisely just 
the x is this is what leads to this okay these two are the same sort of idea and number four it has countably many open connected components so not only does it has countably many components connected components but also has that those connected components are open and i'll leave that one for you to prove and then one more one more property is that it's locally compact. Okay, locally compact means that around any point x, I can choose an open interval such that a compact set contains it. So, in our case, around every point you can find an open ball that is pre-compact. So I just take the closure of it. That's a compact set that contains that open set. And then we're done. This was a complicated proof, but it led to a lot of really good properties. Okay, but there's one more property that I can discuss that's sort of unrelated to this. I'm going to define what locally finite means. Okay, so definition two is of locally finite. So locally finite means that a collection, I'll call it fancy x of subsets of m is locally finite if okay and this is the important part for any x in m that there exists a u containing x open such that u intersects only finitely many elements of x. So for example, if I have a manifold like this, and I have this as my collection of sets. Okay, so around any point, there exists an open set around it that only intersects finitely many. So it only intersects finitely many of these sets. In a sense, it's locally, looks like it's finite. And now another definition, definition three, is going to be of refinement. Okay, so given a collection, x, we say, we say that y is a refinement if for any x in x, there ex exists a y in y, such that y is a subset of x. So say I have say I have this collection of subsets, okay? A refinement would be like this. Just for each one of these, you just make it a little smaller. So you're refining it, you're making it smaller. And the theorem is, is that any manifold has it that any open cover, collection of open sets that covers M, has a refinement, making it smaller like this, that is of the, the pre-compact balls that we discussed before, and locally finite. And this is also known as paracompactness. So any manifold is paracompact. So this proof, I'm not gonna do. <laughs> I don't have the time for it, to be honest. But the idea you do is that you take a collection, K, a countable collection of compact sets. Okay, we know this because it has a cover of pre-compact balls. You just could take like the cover, uh, closure of each of those and then you get a compact cover like this. So you exhaust it out like this. And what you do is you say that VI is going to be KI plus one, remove the interior of KI. And so, for example, if this is a compact ball, then the interior would be that. You just remove the edge. When you're doing a closure, you just add in the edge back. And you also take wi equal to 
the interior of Ki plus 2, removing Ki minus 1. You look at these, and then you prove some stuff about it, and then you get the theorem. It's a complicated proof. I don't have nearly enough time for it. This video is already very long, okay? But if you want, you can use this yourself and try to prove it. If you get the answer right, make a, like a latex document or like even just answer it in the comments. Whoever gets it right, well, I will pin you. Okay, whoever proves this using this sort of method, I'll pin you, and uh, good luck. <laughs> so again, what this theorem says is that every manifold is paracompact, which is sort of like compactness, except a little weaker. And before we proved that it has, that it was locally compact, now we've proven that it's paracompact, and we've proven that it has a basis of pre-compact balls. There's so many compact rules that go with manifolds. And so we've also proven a lot about the connectedness of manifolds, namely that they're locally path connected and that their path connected parts are equal to their connected parts. And so that's it.